there, fourth graders. This is Mrs. Long, and I am coming with a little bit of help on addition and subtraction. Now, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because this really is taking exactly what you've done in all of the previous years of math, and you're just working with bigger numbers. There's not really anything new or different about adding and subtracting. Again, we're just working with bigger numbers this year, so you just have to keep going across the problem a little bit further. But I did want to make sure I emphasized our math vocabulary okay so in math vocabulary is really important just like it is in any other subject because we see a lot of word problems and the word problems are written where we have to know what those words mean if I have a problem and it says find the difference between 28 and 14 I need to know what find the difference means and a lot of times I see students list like, okay well it says find the difference so well, one has a two in the tens place and one has a one in the tens place. and But actually, the difference in math means the answer to a subtraction problem. So if I know that, I know, oh, I have to do 28 minus 14. That's not too hard. Okay, so the sum is the answer to an addition problem. It's not the answer. It is the answer to an addition problem. If I say find the sum and you multiply, you've done the wrong thing. All right, and then the difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. Finding the sum, answer to an addition problem, finding the difference, answer to a subtraction problem. Sometimes in math, you will see problems and they're lined up horizontally. And I'm gonna do a subtraction example because subtraction tends to be where most students struggle and we're gonna specifically look at zeros, okay? So if I have, let's say, 4,002, minus 3,197. Okay, this is my problem. The first thing I need to do is get out my paper and pencil and write it down. But I don't wanna write it down horizontally. It's not really very easy to subtract horizontally. We wanna line it up vertically and we need to make sure that we're lining up the place values so that each place is lined up underneath. So I have 4,002 and I wanna subtract 3,197, all right? Now, if you tend to be a little bit sloppy in your writing, you may want to make columns to help keep everything lined up. So you have your ones column, your tens column, your hundreds column, and your thousands column, just to help keep yourself organized. I have seen that sometimes students make mistakes just because their numbers don't line up right. And it's not that they don't know how to add or subtract, it's that their, their numbers aren't quite organized enough. And so this kind of helps to keep it a little bit neater. All right, you may or may not need to do this. Another way that you could do this is if you take a piece of notebook paper or your, your composition notebook and you turn it on its sides, so then you have those lines on the paper are going vertically and you can line up the numbers that way in there and then it already draws the lines for you. All right, and now I need to subtract. Remember, if there's more on the floor, I have to go next door and borrow some more, right? Have you guys heard that one? You may have heard your teacher say that in the past. I cannot, if I have two of something, I can't take seven away. I have to go and borrow. But I go next door, and it's like I'm looking for sugar, right? I go next door, my next door neighbor, I ask her, she says, I don't have any, so I have to keep going. And here. They don't have any either, so then I keep going. You basically go across the number until you get to something that's not a zero. Okay, I can borrow from this. So my four turns into a three. My zeros both turn into nines. And then the two turns into a 12. Okay. So if it's not the zero you're borrowing from, it turns into a nine. And I'll show you another example with zeros just to kind of clarify that. Now I can subtract 12 minus seven. Okay, well I wanna think seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, if I don't have my, my facts memorized, you do have fingers, they work, right? Nine minus nine, oh, that one's easy, that's zero. Nine minus one, eight, three minus three is nothing. So the answer is 805. Okay, let's look at one more example of a problem and it's gonna have zeros too. All right, let's say I have um, 7,000 minus 
316. All right, 7,000 minus 4,316. Again, I have all zeros up here, so I'm gonna have to do some regrouping, all right? I have zero minus six. If I have nothing, I can't take six away because I have nothing to begin with. So I have to go next door, all right? But here, still a zero, still a zero. Okay, I've gotta go all the way to the seven. The seven goes down to a six. This one turns to a nine. This one turns to a nine. And then the zero I start with turns to a 10. So the only time I turn a zero to a 10 when I'm regrouping in subtraction is if that's the zero I start with. On the last example, remember both zeros turned to nines because I didn't start with a zero. In this case, the zero I start with turns to a 10, but the other zeros turns to nines. And then I subtract. So I have 10 minus six, and I know that that's four. Nine minus one equals eight. 9 minus 3 equals 6, and 6 minus 4 equals 2. If I want to check and make sure that my subtraction is correct, I can do what's called the inverse operation. Inverse means opposite. The opposite operation, the opposite of subtraction is addition. So if I take these two numbers, my difference plus the bottom number in my subtraction problem, and I add them together, I should get 7,000. It's always a great idea to check our work, so let's do that. 2,000 684 plus 4,316. All right, four plus six is 10. Okay, so I write my zero, regroup my one. One plus eight is nine, plus one more is 10. Write my zero, regroup my one. One plus six is seven, plus three more is 10. Write my zero, regroup my one. One plus two is three, three plus four is seven. There we go. All right. Now the same. This is this is basically what you were doing before with addition and subtraction. Again, we've just gone from having two and three digit numbers to having four and five digit numbers. But it's the same strategy. It's the same regrouping. It should look exactly the same. The other thing that might be a little bit different this year that you didn't do maybe in years past, and maybe you have depending on what your school did, but we, where we added three big numbers together. So if I have 24,305, and then I have, let's say 6,247, and then I have, let's say 14,100, we'll just do that, okay? And I'm adding this together. It's the same thing. I wanna make sure my columns are nice and lined up, okay? And I'm just adding Three numbers together instead of two. Well, I know five plus seven is 12. 12 plus zero is still 12. So I wrote my two, regroup my one. One plus zero is one, plus four more is five, plus zero is still five. Three plus two is five, plus one more is six. And then I'm gonna put my comma. Four plus six is 10. 10 plus four is 14. Write my four, regroup my one. One plus two is three, and three plus one is Four. All right. So again, it's the same strategy. You guys know how to add and subtract. This is not something that is new to you. This is not something that you have not been doing in years past. The numbers are just bigger. Okay. So make sure that you are working carefully. Make sure that you are checking your answers and you have your columns all nice and neat and lined up and make sure that you remember our math vocabulary. The sum is the answer to an addition problem and the difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. Have a great day guys.